Today we're going to learn about linear programming. What kind of math do snowy owls like? Algebra. Let's get ready. Grab paper, pencil, calculator. These are multi-step problems that are long. Take your time as you go through them and take notes along the way. We're going to go through the steps first and then we'll do two problems together. So linear programming is an optimization technique for a system of linear constraints and a linear objective function. We're going to find the max and min of a problem. So there's a lot of fancy vocabulary there. We just want to remember that we're trying to maximize or minimize a, pro a problem. So we're not going to do this example. I just liked it because it has a lot of our vocabulary here. So we are going to look at what constraints are. And basically, that's a system of inequalities. Sometimes you'll have three, four, five. Notice um, we're often going to be including x is greater than 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0 because they're usually word problems and we don't need negative answers. Our objective function is going to be an equation. Notice how it. it equals C here. So sometimes we'll be trying to maximize cost or minimize cost, maximize profit. So that's going to be the equation. Um, notice here that we have our graph. So they've graphed all of the inequalities. They shaded them. This shading is called my feasible region. That's where all my possible answers could come from. But the answers that we're going to concern ourselves with are the vertices. So we'll be finding all the vertices that touch that shaded region. And then we're going to take those vertices, plug them into the objective function. That's where these four equations come from. And if we're looking for the maximum value, then we find the highest. And if we're looking for the minimum, then we find the lowest. So that's our vocabulary. And let's look at it more specifically. So the steps are, you always want to identify your variables. Um, you're going to go through a lot of steps, and at the end, you want to make sure you know which one is represented by which. Number two, you're going to write the objective function as an equation. I usually start with this, and the example that we're going to see, we don't actually know that right off the beginning, so we're going to start with the constraints. But the objective function is an, an, an equation, so it's going to equal either profit or cost, those kinds of things. Number three, we're going to write the constraints as inequalities and remembering the zeros. So remember to include x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero to keep it in the first quadrant and keep it positive. We're going to graph the system of inequalities and the shaded region is called the feasible region. We're going to list all of the vertices. Those are listed as points. And then we're going to plug the vertices back into the objective function. The question itself will ask us to identify the minimum or maximum, and then we want to make sure we're answering the question. So here's our example. The annual Springfield Dirt Bike Competition is coming up and participants are looking for bikes. They turn to Apu, who has the best bikes in town. Apu has 18 wheels, 15 seats, and 14 exhaust pipes in his supply room. He can use these to assemble two different types of bikes, the Rider and the Rover. The rider is made with two wheels, one seat, and two exhaust pipes. It's designed to glide around the, cu the curves effortlessly. The rover has three wheels, three seats, and one exhaust pipe. It's designed to carry multiple passengers over the roughest terrain. That's a lot of information we have. So Apu needs to decide how many of each bike he should assemble to maximize his profit. There's the word we're looking for. This is a maximizing type of problem. We're going to try to maximize profit. Because of the popularity of the dirt bike competition, he knows that no matter how many bikes he assembles, he'll be able to sell them all. Apu needs your, your help. So first we're going to identify our variables. We're going to let x equal the number of riders that he can make and y be the number of rovers he can make. And then the question is, how many possible riders and rovers can he make? So we know that he has some supplies. How many can he make? And then in a little bit, we'll add the money and then we'll come to the profit. So I tried to recap into one page what he has. And he has those, we those numbers of wheels, seats, and exhaust. First, we're going to try to identify our constraints as inequalities. So while you might think that you're going to write 18W plus 15S plus 14P for pipes, that's not quite what we're going to do. Because remember, we identified our variables as the rider is X and the rover is Y. 
So those are variables, and we don't want to introduce these other variables. So I'm going to erase that. And let's think about what we're going to do here. Well, I know that each rider has two wheels, and each rover has three wheels, and I have 18 wheels all together. So I am going to make a wheel equation or inequality. So we, we're going to do two for the rider and three for the rover. And I have at most 18, so I want to keep that less than or equal to 18. Then for my seats, I have 15 of those and the rider takes one and the rover takes three. So I'm going to make a seat equation. 1x plus 3y is less than or equal to 15. Then I have my exhaust pipes, two and one. So I'm going to do that inequality. Let's see, 2x plus 1y is less than or equal to 14. I want to add in x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and y has to be greater than or equal to 0. And this would be all of my constraints, so I have 5 in this example. And here they are. So now we're on to step two. We're going to graph them. Um, you can rearrange them into slope intercept form. Sometimes you can use standard form here. Um, so we're going to graph the first one. And I am going to graph it with being in standard form and my intercepts. So if I plug in 0 for x in the first equation, this is going to be 6, so I have the point 0, 6. And if I plug 0 in for y, then I'm going to have 9, 0. So that line is going to go, x is 9, and y is 6. And I'm going to draw that line. And then with my second equation, my x-intercept is going to be 0. And or sorry, 7, 0, and my y-intercept is going to be 14. And I know that 14 is right up at the top. It's a little shaky. And my third one, x is going to be 15, and y is going to be 5. 15 is actually out here. And hopefully you would actually have graph paper, your calculator, so you can get a little bit better. With our zeros, that's just keeping it above into there. You really do need to pay attention to your feasible region where you're shading, because it might be below, or it might be this little tiny triangle in the middle, or it might be above. All of these are y is less than, so it's going to be everything less than this, so it's going to be this region here. This is my feasible region. So given the feasible region, I want to grab all of my vertices. So I have 0, 0. I have my y-intercept. I have my x-intercept. And I have this point, which does cross evenly on the graph. So that's going to be 3, 4. And I have this point, which is... 6, 2. And if you are unsure, you're going to pick up your calculator and you're going to graph the two lines and then use second trace to find those points of intersection. So we have the shaded region. We have five vertices. Now we need to think about our objective function, and we want to keep in mind that he's trying to maximize profit. So this is new information for us. He's going to get $15 for each rider and $30 for each rover. So I want to write a statement to maximize my profit. So I'm going to say P for profit, and that's going to equal 15 for each X and 30 for each Y. So we're going to take those 0, 0. They're going to take those points and plug them in. And we're going to get 150. And we're going to get 105. And 45, 165, and what's that one? 80, 
6140 maybe I might be doing might be wrong on that let's see on the next slide 150 on that one so this ends up being my maximum 165 um, so he can make $165 if he sells three riders and four rovers. We want to make sure we answer it in words and write exactly that. So Apu should make three riders and four rovers for a profit of $165. Now it's your turn. So pause it, try this. I will read it for you first. Lisa is making cookies to sell at the Dirt Bike Competition. A dozen oatmeal cookies requires three cups of flour and two eggs, and a dozen sugar cookies require four cups of flour and one egg. She has 40 cups of flour and 20 eggs. She can make no more than nine dozen oatmeal cookies and no more than seven dozen sugar cookies. She earns $3 for each dozen oatmeal and $2 for each, uh, each dozen of sugar cookies. How many dozens of each type of cookie should she make to maximize her profit? That is our question. So pause it, try it here. Remember your steps. You're gonna identify your variables, write your constraints as inequalities, Write your objective function, graph your system, shade the feasible region, find your vertices, plug them into your objective function, and then answer the question. There's a hint on the next page. The hint would be that you're using the dozens of oatmeal as your X and Y is the dozen of sugar cookies. You are not making F for flour and E for eggs. Remember, we're looking for each type of cookie. The answer's on the next page. So here we go. I wrote a flour equation and I wrote an egg equation. And then we had the piece about the dozens. That's where that comes from. X is less than or equal to nine. Y is less than or equal to seven. Um, I shaded all of those. I found all of my vertices. And then I found my maximum was 32. So she should make six dozen oatmeal and four dozen sugar cookies. Nice job. 